Hi, my name is Ed Ricker. Is your young Mavic Pro emotional or overly sensitive? Does the slightest interaction seem to set it off like a hormonal teenager? Well, with these easy steps, you too can have a wonderful relationship with your Mavic Pro. Let's get started. So here we are in the DJI Go 4 app, and we're gonna start by going to the menu. So at the very top of the screen, you'll see that the GPS and the little quadcopter icon, and that brings up your MC settings. So this is home point settings, return to home altitude. Now beginner mode can also be toggled in this uh, setting window, but we're gonna go to advanced settings at the bottom. Um, so Expo, if you click on EXP, so this is the uh, EXP window. This is where you adjust your throttle, your rudder, and your forward right and backward left uh, sensitivity levels. Uh, right out of the box, you may be in beginner mode, but let's go to normal mode for now. So here are your throttle controls, your rudder controls, and your forward right and backward left controls. Right out of the box, usually these are 0.25 across the board, but I have actually deadened the rudder right and rudder left by just a little bit to 0.20. 0.20 is actually the same rudder that you'll find in beginner mode if you have that set. So basically, I've kind of deadened my pan from right to left, and that really helps when you're trying to get a nice sweeping shot. It's a little bit slower, a little less sensitive, and you don't run the risk of like herky-jerky movements quite so much. Now, if we switch this to sport mode on the side here, you'll see that throttle up is the same, but rudder right and rudder left is now 0.35, and forward right and backward left is now 0.35 as well. So obviously that's more if you're trying to uh, race around with this thing, or you're trying to maybe keep up with traffic with it, but for, for the most part, you wanna keep on normal. Now let's go back to advanced settings and then sensitivity. So sensitivity is your attitude, your brake, and your yaw point. Now the attitude of the controller is how aggressively the drone responds to control input. So if you press uh, a certain direction on the stick, how quickly, how uh, maybe aggressively will the drone react to that? Brake is how aggressively the drone is going to react to you letting up off that movement. How quickly will it resume hovering after you let up off of the stick? Finally, yaw endpoint is how much of the yaw will be enacted when you press the stick all the way to the left or the right that controls yaw. If you have it at 100%, it's going to move very quickly from left to right. But if you have it at 50, like I have it set at, then the controller is only going to take half of that input. Now, that's what we want for a nice smooth pan or um, something where we're trying to follow an object moving slowly across the screen. We want a slow yaw endpoint. Gain, we're not gonna talk about today. Uh, we're gonna leave it at all at 100%. These are things that you don't want to really adjust unless you know what you're doing. By the way, as just a little tip here, urgent stop mode, that's if you put the controls in this particular configuration to actually stop the propellers from spinning uh, if you have some sort of issue or breakdown. Well, make sure it is in breakdown and not always because if you're actually pressing these controls while you're flying normally, you may eventually one day have your left stick all the way to the bottom left and your right stick all the way to the bottom right. You don't want this thing falling out of the sky because that could happen. And I wonder if that's happened to some people who complained about the drone just fell out of the sky randomly. Well, maybe you had your urgent stop mode on always and then you actually pressed the controls that way and yeah, you lost the drone. So make sure that it's on breakdown, which means that the drone is already in distress and maybe it's on the ground or hitting something. Then you can stop the propellers from spinning. All right, gimbal settings. At the very bottom on the left here, right before the three dots, you have that little camera icon. That's the gimbal settings. You wanna make sure that you can um, adjust the uh, gimbal roll if you need to, if your horizon is maybe a little off kilter. Let's also go to uh, advanced settings in the gimbal settings. And so we have gimbal tilt limit. I have that off. I mean, sure that extra 30 degrees up can be good if you're trying to shoot maybe a, a low uh, moonrise or you're trying to um, maybe shoot above over some trees, but for the most part, I want it off because I'd rather be able to snap to the horizon and not kind of overshoot and go too high. So I have that off unless I really need it. Gimbal start-stop buffer, that's actually pretty important too. You want that a little higher than uh, the normal setting out of the box so that when we stop uh, raising the gimbal, it will slow down gradually to a stop as opposed to just stopping abruptly. 
and then also your gimbal pitch expo. So basically that's how fast the gimbal travels while you're still making it go up and down with the switch. That's how fast the gimbal is actually raising or lowering its pitch um, as you're pressing the little dial here. So you wanna make sure that that's low enough so that you, know, you don't uh, accidentally go too fast. Then you also wanna have that buffer at the end long enough so that you can have a, a nice gradual stop. The gimbal pan synchronous follow is also something you should have on if you wanna have that cinematic quality because uh, that actually helps the gimbal turn a little bit on the drone as you're moving through space so that when the drone itself is turning, the gimbal has already kind of adjusted for that motion. You can actually see on the screen that I have that synchronous follow on. I can actually press the left and the right stick and the gimbal actually moves while the drone is still sitting on the ground. So if you imagine when you're flying in the sky, you're, you're turning right or left with the stick and so the gimbal helps to move to uh, maybe deaden that, that jolt of the drone actually moving left or right. So Gimbal Pitch Expo I have at 23. You could even go higher than that. Uh, I think 23 is a good number for me. Um, also the start stop buffer is 18. Again, that works for me. All these settings work for me. So you make sure that you kind of get the setting that works for you best. All right guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these settings work for you. Subscribe if you like the video because I'm doing videos like this all the time. And also give me a comment if you have something to say or if you have a question. All right guys, until next time, happy flying.